In the shadows, Russia is fighting a secret war, a war within. The enemies are Russian citizens, traitors, say the state, who threaten the country. In the paranoid and militaristic mood of Russia today, security services are tracking and swooping down on ordinary people, accusing mothers of extremism and fathers of treason on highly secretive evidence, snatching them from their apartments, their offices, or the street. It happened here, to this family. Nine-year-old Anton came home from school one day and his father was gone. Ala has two young kids to raise. Her husband, Gennady Kravtsov, is in prison. For nearly two years, she's kept all his letters, including a recent one sent to Anton for his birthday. Dear Anton, happy birthday. I remember so well the first time we met, you were all wrapped up with your head sticking out. I couldn't even give you a manly handshake, but now, in your ninth year, you are already writing me letters. Do you miss him? Very much miss him. Anton, what does your dad tell you about why he's not here? I remember he sent me a letter that they took him and it was not right. He didn't tell me much more about it. We went with mom to visit him in jail. It is very painful, but I don't cry. Gennady and Ala traveled a lot. He'd retired from his job as an IT engineer with Russia's military intelligence. After five years, he put out feelers about new work, first in Belarus, then at a Swedish company. He got no offers. But that was enough to alert the FSB, Russia's security service, formerly the KGB. They came to our home, invaded without a search warrant, took all our computers and started the investigation. On that day, Ala, when the FSB came with Gennady, were you afraid? Everything he said they flipped. They needed his case to show that we have a spy, that there is somebody who sells his motherland. For a year, the FSB watched him. He cooperated. Then one day, they seized him. In the morning, he went to buy milk. They attacked him from behind, threw him on the ground, twisted his arms, started to beat him. Why did they do this? He knew FSB was watching him. I understand it is like a witch hunt to show we have spies, that we have internal and external enemies. He's convicted of high treason. Are you convinced he's innocent? Absolutely, absolutely, I'm sure he is. Russia is in a hyper-vigilant state, intensely focused on threats. The FSB is being pushed to root out enemies at home, raising comparisons with the KGB and the dark days of Stalin's rule of terror and assaults on so-called traitors. In a speech last month to the FSB, President Vladimir Putin targeted their urgent mission. Foreign intelligence services have stepped up their activity in Russia. That was convincingly confirmed over the last year. We need to cut off all channels of access to confidential information. Accusations of traitor are more common than ever. Convictions for high treason tripled in 2014 to 15 cases after the start of the conflict in Ukraine. Gennady Kravtsov was found guilty last September, sentenced to 14 years. The FSB refused to talk about his case. His lawyers, Ivan Pavlov and Evgeny Smirnov, are now appealing to Russia's Supreme Court. 
Allah has come to the court with friends and family prepared for the worst. How do you feel about today? To be honest, I have no hope they will reduce his sentence or even release him. Lawyer Ivan Pavlov is a realist. State treason is the highest crime in Russia and the FSB rarely lose. They use all resources just to close all information about these cases that nobody will know. They consider independent lawyers who participate in such cases like a, a point of tension. And we expect some actions against us, of course. We have to be ready for it. St. Petersburg, with its graceful lines and slower pace, may seem an unlikely place for the gritty job of fighting the FSB and the Kremlin. But it's where Ivan Pavlov has built a unique legal squad. St. Petersburg is the headquarters for a small but dogged team of lawyers and journalists whose mission, as they see it, is to protect Russians' rights. Things like the right to refuse interrogation, refuse searches without legal assistance, basic pushback that many Russians still emerging from the Soviet era are reluctant to do. One of their campaigns is called What to Do If They Come For You. Two years ago, Pavlov set up Team 29, an upstart group named for Article 29 in Russia's constitution, which is supposed to ensure freedom of information. Their mission is to shine light on legal fights the government would rather hide. I usually say we participate in such cases which impossible to win in Russia. We uh, have to be optimists and uh, just don't put our hands down. Lots of people, thousands of people read these how to and the others how to. Nikolai Obchenikov runs Team 29's Flash new website. There is a team, there is a, our main cases. Team 29 also plays the public advocate, novel in Russia, with a kind of primer on rights. I'm interested in uh, showing people how to survive, maybe, and uh, stay free. How to survive a search, an interrogation, and the most popular hit, what to do if the FSB comes for you. What do you tell people? First of all, we'll tell that FSB can come to your house and can become interested in you uh, at every moment. We cannot predict it. We try to tell them that they have right to keep silence, to not tell anyone, to not to work with state lawyers, because state lawyers sometimes work along with uh, officers of uh, FSB. It can be dangerous work. Pavlov's been beaten up, his staff has felt threatened. They sometimes work without salaries. Defending alleged enemies of the state is not profitable or popular. Do some people think you and your team are traitors? We are not traitors, we are patriots. We are real patriots because we want, we want good for our country. We want to bring her to the future, but not in the past. We, un we understand our past, we remember it. Uh, we, c we have to learn some lessons and to, to bring our country ahead, not, not by back. Back in Moscow, Gennady Kravtsov's appeal at Russia's Supreme Court grinds on. It's now nightfall and no decision yet. Buried four floors below ground behind a steel vaulted door is a hidden court. Allah is waiting. So is Kravtsov's sister. Ivan Pavlov emerges once with a picture of her husband. Is he smiling, she asks. Here, cut off in the bowels of the Supreme Court, they've been waiting for seven hours. Finally, the door opens. Inside, for a few precious moments, Gennady Kravtsov can connect with his wife and his sister. Such a rare meeting. Gena, where's your optimism, she urges. No one really expects the court will pardon him. But they have no other recourse. 
After a few minutes, the judge begins to intone. And suddenly, the mood changes. It's more than they hoped. Not an acquittal. The court wouldn't go that far. But Gennady's sentence is reduced by more than half, from 14 years to six. Kravtsov will soon be transferred to a penal colony 500 kilometers from home. Ala will get only two weekend visits a year. And still, tears of joy. We wanted to prove that he is not guilty today. Of course, we understand that what's happening in Russia right now, it's impossible. But still, it was aim. Thank God, thanks to Ivan and Evgeny, they fought till the end. Why do you think the judge reduced his sentence? Because it is obvious that there is no case. Everything is falsified. As the sentence cannot be cancelled, they reduced it. They gave the minimum what is possible for such cases. This case of alleged treason defied the odds, pulled out of the shadows and challenged. But in today's Russia, naming traitors remains a highly potent tool. Susan Ormiston, CBC News, Moscow.